Hello and welcome to News Click. It's very clear even after a five judge Supreme Court constitutional bench has unanimously ruled in the dispute between the central government and the government of Delhi that the fractious relationship between the center and the Delhi government has not been resolved. Today we, we have as a special guest PDT Achari, former Secretary General of the 14th and 15th Lok Sabha and a noted expert on the working of the constitution. He's going to try to explain the important aspects of what has happened so far and what to expect next in this dispute. Mr. Achari, thank you very much for joining NewsClick. We are hoping to be able to explain to our viewers why this ruling of the Supreme Court, followed by the ordinance passed by the central government, why they matter. Now, when we were speaking earlier, you said that Section 3A of this ordinance cleared by the center basically does not undo the basis of the Supreme Court order. It is only nullifying it. Can you tell me why this distinction matters, what it means? In this particular case, you know, the Supreme Court has said that the state government of Delhi has exclusive power to deal with the offices. Because that power of ours taken away by the central government through, an through a notification earlier in 2015. And that was the case actually. The services means the posting and transfers of offices and employees. All okay. these come under services. We are dealing with list number two. That is the list which contains items on which only the state legislature can make law. That means parliament cannot make a law on a subject matter which is in the state list. That is what uh, the legislative list means. Now here, the contentious issue was the services which come under the state list, which is included in the item or entry 41 of list 2, that is the state list. So basically, services belong to the state that only the state has control over the services. That means the officers, employees, right. and all that. The reason is that unless the government has control over its own offices, government right. cannot function. It's a very simple Absolutely. thing. But in the case of Delhi, this power was taken away by the center through a notification in 19, I mean 2015. Right. That was challenged. Because now the position was the Delhi chief minister or the ministries did not have any kind of administrative or disciplinary control over the officers who are serving the Delhi government. So they were directly under the lieutenant governor who is the representative of the center. Therefore, the case was whether the services should come to the state or they should remain with the center. Supreme Court has said no. The services should come under the state because otherwise the states cannot function. If the offices are not under the control of the state government, then the state government cannot function. On that basis, the Supreme Court has given this judgment and said that the services should go to the state government. So that was the decision of the Supreme Court. But Supreme Court based this decision on Article 239AA3, which says that state government of Delhi, I mean the legislature, has all the powers which are given to the state. Right. That means all the matches which are there in the state list, except police, public order, and land, except these right. three items. On all other items, Delhi government has power to Delhi legislature has power to make laws and Delhi government has executive power. That is the crux of the Supreme Court judgment. Now comes an ordinance. The central government was not satisfied with, obviously, was not satisfied with the Supreme Court judgment. And therefore, they thought of bringing an amendment, I mean, bringing an ordinance. Um, containing an amendment of the GNCTD Act. That is the law 
which has been made by parliament to which deals with the governance of the state of delhi right okay now the crux of the ordinance is that the legislature of delhi that is the delhi assembly lost this power of making laws about the offices the services right. that means right services have been taken away from the delhi government through this ordinance which goes contrary to the judgment of the supreme court now the question is whether parliament can make a law ordinance is a law ordinance is a law which is made by the president president means the government of india question is whether parliament can make a law to nullify the nullify the supreme court judgment supreme court has said in many cases that parliament cannot do that uh, because supreme court has given its judgment in exercise of its judicial power and parliament does not have the judicial power therefore it cannot neutralize or negate the the supreme court judgment parliament cannot say for example notwithstanding any uh, any court decree or order or judgment uh, uh, this is this 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 power is not with the state government they can't straight away say that and actually section 3a to which i made a reference uh, says only that or precisely that parliament cannot make a law to nullify or nullifying the judgment of the supreme court but the parliament can make a law by giving another basis for that law another that basis, the basis here would be would be the amendment or uh, maybe nullifying the G, uh, gntcd act the uh, government of national credit uh, capital territory act is is that what it can do or would no, it require GNTD a constitutional uh, amendment that, yeah because this decision of the supreme court in giving the services to the state government is based on that particular provision in the constitution 239 aa Three, which specifically says that Delhi Assembly will have the power to legislate on all matters in the state list except those three exempted items. So that okay. means all matters, including services. That is very clear, and that has been made clear by the by the Supreme Court. So its decision is based on that. So okay. that base that basis has to change. That means unless you amend the constitution. and take away or make a specific mention in that that services will not be there with the state government only then uh, the 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 parliament's uh, law will be valid uh, otherwise it is not valid that is it. you cannot just say what the supreme court has said should not be uh, accepted by anybody or not be standing anything means only that that means whatever mr. the supreme court has said mr chari if this law is not valid if even if parliament tries to pass a law of the kind that the ordinance uh, imagines if it is not valid then does it not come into action will it be later struck down what are the legal possibilities here no at the moment the law has come into force yes but the moment the moment uh, an ordinance is promulgated it comes it, it comes uh, into effect that is thing now after the uh, parliament meets now whenever it meets till then it continue and it continues for another 6 weeks after the parliament has, session has begun yes and within those 6 weeks the government can bring a regular bill before the house and pass it get it passed by both the houses then it becomes a law but this ordinance is valid now and also it will be valid till 6 weeks from the assembly of parliament from the meeting of parliament that is the procedure which 6 weeks is basically the time given to parliament to that turn from, an ordinance from, 
from the meeting that means the day the parliament meets in the next session yes. from that day onwards for six weeks this ordinance will be in force and during these six weeks if bill is not passed then the ordinance lapses if it does not lapse and it becomes a law that would be a perfectly valid law no that will be challenged now in fact in this 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 uh, ordinance can also be challenged uh, on, on many occasions in the past ordinance was challenged ordinances were challenged and in the meantime the ordinances were replaced by law regular law and then the challenge will be of that law that's how it is so the basic idea behind the or the 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 subject matter of this of this uh, ordinance will be under challenge absolutely now that i think the court is in recess um so when the court reassembles then uh, perhaps they will they will challenge it yes the government of delhi has said that they plan to challenge it suppose parliament passes a law that says that apart from the three exceptions they are adding services as another exception passing that as a law would that be valid in the eyes of the law and the constitution See, what is the basis on which they say that what is the basis you must look at that that is the basic issue what is the basis on which the parliament says that services will be with the state government uh, will be with the central government when so, uh, the article in the constitution makes it very clear that all subjects which are dealt with by the states in list 2 will be available to the state government of delhi except those three things that means the these services are also included in that when the constitution right. says so then how can you pass a law um, uh, against that you can't do that unless you amend the constitution is there a precedent for thinking and analyzing what a government does in this manner uh, are you aware of any cases which have come up to your attention where there will be a committee or a person in charge of seeing whether the government's policy following the rules does this happen oh that uh, provision is there in the ordinance but that yes. is something very strange it's a very strange kind of ordinance i mean a provision in the ordinance where the the decisions taken by the council of ministers will be checked scrutinized by a, by by an officer and uh, and then he will make a recommendation to the lieutenant governor uh, who will take the final decision that means you are actually defeating the very um, uh, purpose of this constitutional provision those council of ministers take a decision uh, on matters on which they can take decisions it is matters which are within their jurisdiction and if the government takes a decision somebody can challenge it in the court but who is the secretary to say whether uh, a decision taken by the council of ministers is against the constitutional rule because after all a secretary is not a constitutional expert and he has no authority uh, to decide on these matters or recommend on these matters if right. a decision taken by the council of ministers is wrong in law or is against the constitution then it can be challenged in a court of law But the point okay. is that the council of ministers have absolute powers in dealing with the matters which are within their jurisdiction and you cannot have a secretary sitting over the council of ministers to scrutinize it and see whether this is in conformity with constitutional provisions and so on that is absolutely absolutely i think it is it is something very strange that this kind of a provision doesn't exist anywhere yes even i i mean i tried to look for previous uh, such yeah. instances and uh, i could not uh, come up with any you know what happens next if a supreme court ruling by a five judge bench is not able to settle a very fractious debate since 2015 which has led to multiple hearings multiple court cases going from the high court to the supreme court various benches so what does it mean about the state of federalism in india especially with reference to the unique situation uh, or the unique position of delhi so this is a very strange kind of situation 
where the Supreme Court's decision has not been accepted by the government. And within days, the government has moved in with an, amend with a, with, with, with an ordinance to nullify the Supreme Court's decision. This is, I think, um, uh, this has not happened for a very long time. Um, <clears throat> and perhaps in the, in the 60s and 70s, the 60s and 70s, um, we have seen uh, the laws made by um, parliament struck down by the court and then the parliament making a law to deal with that situation and so on, bank nationalization and things like that. But that was a different kind of situation. But Absolutely. here it is not so. Here it is not so. Here a constitutional bench of the Supreme Court has said, and then it is dealing with a small thing. Uh, the issue is whether the services should remain with the state or the center. And right. it's a matter of common sense that services should remain with the states because state government must have control over the offices. Otherwise, the government cannot function. That is the thing. And if it is not allowed, then it is as good as saying that you have no power, you get out. And you are not allowing the state government to function. It is, it is, it is, that, it is like that. Therefore, if the constitution allows a government to function, then it should be allowed to function. That is. And particularly when the Supreme Court has given, and that too, a constitutional bench of the Supreme Court has analyzed and defined, explained the constitutional provision uh, with regard to the position of the state government and its powers, then certainly, I think every government, central government, every authority should accept that. Should accept that. It is not that immediately you should rush in with a with a with an with an ordinance to neutralize that judgment. You can do that, but then on a different basis. On a different basis, you can challenge this, or you can you can you can make a law with a different basis. That you are free to do. Parliament has to, is is free to do that. Now, sir, what is the way out? This would keep happening, not just in Delhi, but there are many other pending disputes of this nature. New ones keep coming up. Distribution of, uh, as, of funds is one issue. Uh, water sharing is another issue. All, all these issues, would, would they just continue? Would we continue to fight it out in courts? Well, uh, <clears throat> see, you have certain constitutional mechanisms to deal with interstate water disputes and things like that. And uh, there are many mechanisms created by the Constitution which deal with such issues. And then the Supreme Court is the court which uh, deals with interstate disputes or the disputes between the states and the center and so on. That mechanism and uh, I mean, that is there. So if there is a dispute, then uh, Either the mechanism created by the constitution will take care of it, or the court will take care of it. That's how it is. Is it not something which which places the ball now actually in the political court? Because when we are talking about a constitutional amendment, then you have to get the agreement of a large number of state governments to agree to it. Well, uh, the constitution amendment which deals with uh, certain aspects uh, relating to the state, the state's power, authority, for example, the change in the legislative list, such matters will be, will have to be ratified. I and mean, if, 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 if there is a constitution amendment bill which deals with any of such matters, will have to be ratified by uh, half the number of the states. But then there, you know, it is actually what is mentioned in the constitution is the state. The question is whether Delhi is considered to be a state or not. Delhi is not a state, it is a union territory. So whether this provision applies to the union territory or not, that is also to be decided by the court. Of course, states, when the, the term state is defined, somewhere it is said it includes the union territories, and somewhere it says that it doesn't include union territory. So on this matter, um, where the bill seeks to change the powers of the uh, of the state, so whether it is actually 
necessary to be ratified by half the number of the states that itself is a question of uh, which comes yeah that is a consider. question which needs to be clarified by the court right so so finally before we end uh, do you think that whatever the center has done uh, we don't know what was their thinking what was on their mind but the action of bringing in an ordinance so soon after a supreme court ruling is it as the delhi government has been saying anti people anti the court even a uh, sort of uh, uh, you know violation of an order uh, are all these very strong statements do they ring true to you right now no i can only say that it looks very strange that the government comes immediately with an ordinance to neutralize the law and uh, neutralize the decision of the supreme court after all it's a question of just services posting and transfer of offices which is not such a very big issue for which the government should rush in with an ordinance immediately that was perhaps not necessary but then it is the wisdom of the government we can't say anything it is only my personal opinion but the government thinks otherwise and they have brought this ordinance but you do think it stands on very thin legal ground very thin constitutional ground legally yes i i i i'm i'm sure that legally um, it is uh, it is on a very uh, very sticky wicket or a weak wicket yeah. right sir and thank you very much for joining us and thanks yeah. for explaining to our, our viewers exactly what is at stake over here thanks very much again and thank you very much for watching this interview you can find more stories and interview on issues that matter to us all on newsclicks youtube channel and on our website thank you again